example, let's talk a little bit about video compositing and post effects. We have a image to the output, but we don't have any video to output. So let's grab one of the videos available in resources. I'm going to go for base. Uh, first off, I'm going to connect it to the image 2D and then we're going to talk uh, about the different and all properties available in image 2D and in video loader. This node came in hashed out gray, implying that it needs some kind of a connection to actually be rendered. Now, if I hover over the output and click on it, I will see all the plausible hookups for this specific node. So in this case, image 2D has three inputs that can correspond with the output of the video loader. So that's video node, alpha image and UV remap image. I'm going to go for the first one, video node. Press space. I see this video being played out via image 2D now. So video loader has a preview in the viewport option, which will make more sense and will be more applicable as we build more complex setups. It has a video dropdown. So any and all videos that we have in our resources can be accessed via this dropdown. You can set in specific frame rates and you can actually flip it on the X and Y axis. Image 2D is an output module, so you can position it in 2D space. You can crop it and you can change blend modes. With this initial setup completed, let's add some post effects. I think I'm going to start with Glow. As soon as I connect Glow to the root, I see that it's activated. I'm going to add one more node. I'm going to go for Edge Detect. Now let's make our Edge Detect a little bit wider. So in the width property, I'm going to set 2. Now notice what happens if, if I change the positional values of these two nodes. Stacking order in Notch is very important. So if Notch doesn't recognize the stacking order from top to, to bottom, it would go from left to right. So by changing the positional values of our post effects, we can actually change the design of our setup quite significantly. And that's true to quite a few other systems in Notch. Another big thing to mention about post effects, majority of them actually have different blend modes. So in this case, under the edge detect, I think I'm going to choose something else, perhaps, perhaps difference. And I see that my glow is rather hard. So under the glow node, I'm going to increase the threshold. Yes, I think this looks much better now. In fact, I can come back to edge detect and give it a color. Probably we should add some more creative post effects. I think I'm going to go for motion data mosh. I think I would like to tick on use scene motion vectors, and I think I should scroll through different blend modes and choose something a little bit less aggressive so we actually see the video a little bit better. I think I'm going to add one more post effect, vector blur, and I'm going to connect it to the root. I think I'm going to reduce the steps to something like 20. Maybe our orientation could be changed to, let's say, 200. And I'm going to decrease the dampening a lot. So far, we covered basic video processing and basic post effects. I think it's good time to move on to a little bit more advanced setup. So with that said, I'm making a new layer now. First node that we're going to use is absolutely the same one as in a previous setting, image 2D. Right, so as I connect it to the root, I see that it's filling the available space with white quad. That's great. Now we need some kind of a video as an output. So I'm going to grab the very same base. What if we want to build a little bit more intricate, for instance, red outlines on this video and those outlines with little dots and the video in the back should be black and white. I can actually build a little processing chain with nulls here. So as you see, we have quite a few nulls to choose from. In this case, we're going to be talking about a video null. So that's the last option here in this list. Right. So first of all, I'm going to daisy chain these nodes. So video loader to video null and null to the image 2D first input. And I guess the best way to describe what video null does is literally to show how it behaves with post effects. But before I add any post effects, I want to make sure that we can see how does this null and this video loader look. So I'm going to shift double click on the video loader and I'm going to shift double click on the null. As you see, null is a direct copy of the video loader. Notice what happens if I connect edge detect to the video loader. 
all of a sudden this edge detect is inherited by video null and then I'll put it to the image 2D. But look what happens if I connect this edge detect to the video null. All of a sudden our video loader is actually intact, so it's clean. I think I'm gonna color my edge detect to a red color. And I'm gonna add those dots as I mentioned before. Dot matrix will be a perfect node to achieve that. There we go, now we have little dots on the edges. So let's build a separate chain here for the black and white pass. I'm gonna go ahead and grab yet another video null. I'm gonna connect it to the video loader. Let's expand it so we see how it looks. So shift double click. So for the bottom one, uh, we've said that we want to have it in black and white. I'm gonna go for color correction node. Then I think I can go for saturation and just zero it out. There we go, now it's in black and white. So the next step here would be to merge those two video nulls back together so we can see both of the settings combined. For that, we have a specific node and it's called composite sources. I'm gonna bring that to the scene and I'm gonna unhook this video null from the image 2D. We're gonna use composite sources to connect those two video nulls and then output it to the image 2D. Right, so I'm connecting video null to the first input here on the left hand side and the second video null to the first in the bottom. So why are we using two inputs for the same node? And they actually state quite similar naming convention. Composite sources and composite source. Well, they fulfill a little bit different tasks. So the top one is actually uh, driving the frame rate and driving the resolution. So if my video null one or this video here would be 4K, the bottom video would be upscaled to 4K as well. Same thing with the frame rate. If this one would be set to 60, this video right here would be upscaled to 60 FPS as well. So this is more or less a parent or a driver, and this is the follower. So with both of those nodes now connected to the composite sources, I can connect the very node to the image 2D for the output. And there we go. Now we're outputting the unified signal via composite source to the image 2D. So let's talk about different settings in the composite sources node. First of all, we have blend amount. So we can actually choose whichever the source is being outputted. So it's like a little switch. Now, clearly that's not exactly what we're going for. We actually want to see them both at the same time. So I'm gonna go and change a blend mode. In this case, if I go for add, it does exactly what I was aiming for. I think next thing that I want to add to this setup is a color LED. We have several of them available here in resources. So I'm just gonna pull in the first one. And I think I'm gonna connect it to the composite sources. So color LEDs, just like video sources, can be toggled through via dropdown until you find the one that you like. So any and all color LEDs that you have in your resources will be available here in the dropdown. Right, let's change some post effects here. I think I'm gonna get rid of the dot matrix for now. And I think I'm gonna go for data mosh again, as we did in the previous setting. So I'm gonna connect it here to the first video null. I'm actually quite happy with the way it looks by default, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and tick on use scene motion vectors. I'm gonna add some post effects to the second video null too. I think here I will go for frame difference. Right, I think I like where this is going, but I think we should address the readability of this setting. So let's add an extra image to D. As I connect the new image 2D to the root, I see that it's overtaking the design. So all of a sudden, again, we have a white quad. And uh, that's stacking order. Depending on where you leave your nodes, it either renders behind the design that we created or in front. In this case, I want this to render in front. I want to use that same video loader for this image 2D. Before I connect those two, I don't want to connect them directly. I think I'm gonna add a video null in between, just so we can attach any and all post effects in between if we want to. To be able to use a matte workflow, or in our case, alpha image workflow, we need some kind of a source to drive the visibility of the top layer and the bottom layer. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for generator. Uh, a perfect way to illustrate this case is to use something like star. So I'm gonna grab a star generator. I'm gonna shift double click to preview how it looks. I'm gonna pipe it into the second input alpha image. 
And as you can see now, this black and white pass is driving the visibility of the top and bottom layer. On the scale Y, I'm going to use a small formula, 16 divided by 9. And I think I'm going to bump up the numbers here so it matches our video. Uh, I think it's going to be 1920 by 1080. There we go. So now if I toggle it on and off, because we have here a preview and viewport option, you can see exactly what's going on. So where we see the white color, it's the top layer. And when we see the alpha, it's the layer beneath. So obviously much better choice than star here would be fractal noise. So I'm going to grab fractal noise generator. I'm going to connect it to the same input. Shift double click it to expand it. And I'm going to use the preview and the viewport option to actually further shape it. So it looks a little bit closer to the setting that we have. So first of all, let's make it into a 16 by 9 setting. So it fills the whole canvas, so 1920 by 1080 on the width and height. And maybe let's add some gain. Every single video loader has a preview in the viewport option. Well, so does the video nulls. So if you want to work on specific iteration or specific part of the chain, you can always press on the video null that you are interested in, click on preview in the viewport, and you will see exactly how that video null or how that piece of the processing chain looks. Now be aware, you should always tick it off once you're done editing. I briefly mentioned that every single Image 2D has its own blend mode. Let's take advantage of that. Let's add yet one more Image 2D to the scene. So I'm going to connect it to the root. And again, I'm going to add a null in between source and the image 2Ds, just so I can add some post effects if I want to. If I was to apply post effects straight on the video loader, it would affect all the rest of the chain. That's why I always want to have a null in between. Shift double click to see exactly how this video null looks. And I think I'm going to apply threshold here. I don't want to output the color, I just want to output the mask. I literally just want to see a black and white pass. I do want this to be in color, so I'm going to go for tint option here. And I think I'm going to make it red. And choose another type of blend mode. So all of a sudden, designs that I had in the back and this new image 2D actually is merging together to make one unified look. 